My boss. That's my boss. Jesus. Jesus. That's my boss. That's my boss. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say, I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed at noon. I'm blessed at noon. And I'm blessed in the evening. I'm blessed in the evening. Everything that I do. Everything that I do. From this day. From this day. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. Because God. Because God. Has commanded, has commanded his blessings, his blessings upon me, upon me, upon me, upon me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While we're sitting there, as Sister Esther was sharing our testimony, the Spirit of the Lord said, Let's pray against the spirit of death. Amen. Amen. Let, let's rebuke that spirit. We, we see that spirit encroaching. Let's let's wait it up in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Let's pray. Let's rebuke it in the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of death. We say, from the life of this world, we rebuke death. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, um, I think a few months ago, the, the, we said to us what the Lord was revealing to us about the coming year. Yeah. And we said for the first six months of next year, it's going to be gross darkness, right? Yes. But it, it's, so, it, it's so amazing that uh, because Satan knows what his plan is that we have revealed, he decided to even start from now. So he has even started right now. See that. See that. So, Satan is not even waiting till next year. <laughs> you know. You know. But there is no death in your house. In the name of No death. No plague of death. Amen. That plague has been withered off. Because Amen. Of Amen. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Amen. 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 Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. All right. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the blessed Lord Jesus, we give you praise. Open our hearts and our minds to be instructed by your spirit. Lord, teach us. Reveal secrets to us. Lord, may our hearts indict a good matter. Open our understanding and may your name be eternally glorified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Say to two people, for glory and grace. For glory and grace. For glory and grace. Did anybody die? For glory and grace. Amen. For glory and grace. Amen. For glory and grace. Amen. For glory and grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world. Hallelujah. Satan, you are in trouble. The Lord reigneth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus conquered the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan, you are in trouble. The Lord reigneth in my life. Death on your part, amen. amen. No death on your part, amen. amen. No death on your part. Amen. Take your seats. No death on your part, amen. Master. Lord, we rebuke that coffin. It's rebuked. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 While we're singing that song, we saw a casket at the back. You know, so we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We roast it by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, my Father. Amen. Amen. No death on your part. Amen. You know, Satan is raging, really. He's raging. No death on your part. Amen. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, uh, we were saying some things about demons, right? That mm. demons smell, smell right? Yeah. Even though we did not record it. <laughs> we didn't put it on record. Amen. Amen. I want to reveal something to us that the Spirit of the Lord wants us to share. You know, we have been discussing on the four winds, right? Yeah. Talked about the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west wind, right? Yeah. And then we said that in our last class, we talked about when the four winds come together, right? And we looked at the creation of man and the making of man, two different experiences. And we said one of the things a lot of Christians are familiar with is the fact that they are familiar with the making of man, which is the forming of man, where the Lord took the clay and made man. And that is why most of you who have attended several burials, they say, to dust you came from, not me now. <laughs> Say not to me. Not so, me. so they say to the person who is dead, to dust the person came, to dust the person Return. returns, right? Mm -hmm. So they are all familiar with the dust, the dust, the dust, the dust. Why? Because man was actually formed from, from the dust of the ground, right? Isn't it amazing that we all say man was made from the dust? Can you handle dust? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Can you handle dust? As civilized as you are, you can handle dust. Okay. But you can handle clay, right? Clay. So, that's full for thought. So, really, you see, it was not dust, dust, really. If it is dust, then how come Jesus spat on the ground? Okay. He didn't see his spat on the dust. And then rubbed it on the guy's eyes and said, go wash in the yeah. pool of Salon, mm -hmm. right? So it was not dust, really. It was the ground. ground. But that tells you something. The ground itself was made, mm -hmm. right, by God. Mm -hmm. And God, out of the ground that he made, he made man. See that? Mm -hmm. So in everything that is created, you can make something out of it, right? Mm -hmm. 
But it takes the wisdom of the Spirit to do so. But that, that's not the part. We'll discuss that in another lesson. We said man was formed mm -hmm. from the ground, right? Mm -hmm. And then we said a lot of Christians are familiar with the forming, the making of man, but they are not familiar with the creation of man. Mm -hmm. And in our last class, we looked at how God created man. For those who even know that God created man, they don't know how God did it. And we saw for the first time how God created man. And we said the creation of man is spiritual. The creation of man is what? Spiritual. spiritual. So God created man. And it is spiritual. And last Wednesday we saw for the very first time how God did what? Created man. Amen. Amen. We saw how God created man, right? And Ezekiel the prophet was the man. Ezekiel was a priest, really. All right? Ezekiel was a priest. He was not really a prophet. All right? Amen. 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 You are not responding now. Is it that we're to, please don't let us talk over your head. Otherwise, let, what we're about to say, we may not be able to go into it. Amen. 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 All right. So, Ezekiel was not a prophet. Ezekiel was a priest. Yes. Really. yes. He was a priest. All right? But, let's... The Lord, of course, he was inspired of the Spirit to speak things. And he saw things. He, he saw visions. Right? He had the privilege of even seeing the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Seeing the cherubims visiting him. You understand? Mm -hmm. And he was the only person who seemed to give us detailed uh, descriptions of the cherubims. Which has to do with an encounter. In fact, he didn't just have a vision of heaven. His own vision was being at the throne. Because that's where you find the cherubims. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, fine. So he didn't just go to the suburb, the city. I mean, he was at the throne. As a matter of fact, the throne came to him. Because he was actually in a valley. And the heavens opened where he was. And he saw the cherubims. Now, would it be right for us to say where he was sitting at the valley was actually the very throne of God? No, it would not be right to say so. Because mm -hmm. the word is spherical, right? Yeah. So where you call up, maybe somebody else is down. Yeah. Right? So, that tells you something, that the throne moved to where he was. No, My yeah. goodness. God. No, 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 no. See, brothers, be careful how you criticize individuals. You don't know their level of relationship with the Spirit of the Lord. And what they have, you see, the Holy Ghost has like emotions. He has emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And the way somebody can prick your emotions to make you happy or sad is the same way you can prick the emotions of the Holy Ghost. That will cause the Holy Ghost to fall in love with you and show you things. I mean, look at Paul. Paul the Apostle. A murder, a, he was once a murderer. Mm -hmm. He had access to revelations that were not lawful for him to share to fellow human beings. Mm. Which means that this guy went beyond the level of being a human being. So he was living in the midst of humans, but he was not a human being. I mean, Job, I mean there, was, there are millions of people in heaven. That the Lord can relate with. The prophets are there. Mm -hmm. Moses is even there. But the Lord himself found the light. The Lord God Almighty found the light in discussing with a mortar here on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. In the person of Saul. And Paul now. Mm -hmm. Talking with Paul. Mm -hmm. If I, as a matter of fact, inviting Paul over. <laughs> he said he was caught up into the third heavens. Yeah. You see, brothers, many people are busy for God. Don't be involved in gossip. Others are busy. Which, of the, which side of the camps do you want to be? You want to join the gossip party or you want to join the busy party for the Holy Ghost? But the point here we want to drive across is that Ezekiel had that privilege of knowing how the Lord created man which Moses never had the privilege of knowing. Moses only talked about the creation and the making of man but Moses talked more of how man was made. And it was the Holy Ghost who revealed the making of man, the forming of man with the dust, the ground. The Holy Ghost himself revealed that to Moses, but the Holy Ghost never told Moses how man was created. God, the Holy Ghost himself revealed it to Ezekiel. And that is where the story of the dry bones, Ezekiel 37, that's what the story is all about. How God created man, with what substance that he used in making man. 
the real man. You know, man is a spirit living in the human body. That man, that real man that lives inside the house, it was a zikr that the Lord revealed it to, how he created him. And the Bible says, the, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me in the spirit to the valley of dry bones. And the Lord showed him how he created man. Do you know, to this very day, we were never told that that army died. So that very army that Ezekiel saw is still very much alive today. The Bible says it is an exceeding great army. That's why prophets are territorial commanders. There is nothing to be afraid of a prophet because you don't know the asana that he carries. Mm. But let's show you something. Let's not excite the prophet. <laughs> So we, we talked about how God created man. And we said man is a product of the wind. That's why if Satan wants to destroy a man, he, needs, he uses the wind. Because man was made from the wind. The creation of man was done by the wind. So man is a product of the wind. You see? That's why somebody can sit in the village and destroy a destiny in Australia. Using the wind. Because man himself is a product of the wind. We looked at that last Wednesday. Man is a product of the wind. But, and then we said, inside man, inside of man, inside of man are the four winds together. Inside of man are what? The, the four, four winds. winds. The north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west wind. We said the north wind for the believer is what? What does the north wind do? It drives away rain. And inside, it brings provision for the believer, right? Yes. And the, inside the north wind is where you have who? The yes. cherubims. Yes. The cherubims are found in the north wind. And then we said the south wind brings what? Heat. Yes. And then we said the east wind brings what? Calamity. calamity. All manner of death, infirmity. Pestilence. Is it pestilence, punishment, banishment is caused by... The east, the east wind. wind. We talked about one tribe in Nigeria, Osu tribe, right? When they say they banish someone, it is the east wind that they release over that person for banishment. And we saw that in scripture. It's been there right from Bible days. It's not peculiar. It's not the evil people that started. It's there in the Bible. Certain people were banished. Certain people were banished. And you need the authority of the east wind to do so. Now, we said the west wind clears off all manner of calamity. Speaking of banishment with the East Wind, you know, there is somebody that can be banished and they say, this one, you are banished for marriage. Somebody can do that. In the coven of his room, you say, you are, this one, who he calls the person's name, you are banished from marrying and the person does not find any partner. Nobody marries the person. East Wind. Very destructive wind. And, and that is even the wind God uses to punish prophets when they misbehave. Mm. And we saw that in this Bible, how God dealt with Jonah. Mm. God used the east wind to, terror, to terrorize Jonah. We saw that. That's, God deals with prophets, and, and that is what he uses. If you are a prophet, never find yourself in a place where you become God's enemy. Where God will say, you, <laughs> because it is the east wind. But the point we want to get across is that man is made, created with the four winds. So you have the north wind. Mm. The south wind. The north wind drives away rain, right? right brings, provision. brings provision, right? Mm -hmm. So the north wind is good, right? Mm -hmm. The south wind brings what? Heat, mm -hmm. pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And then the east wind brings what? Calamity, mm -hmm. destruction, right? Mm -hmm. And then the west wind does what? So Clears all, all the calamity that the east wind brought, right? Mm -hmm. And we said man, we saw that in the book of Ezekiel, that the creation of man, man was created with these four wings. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why you find a man very destructive. You see that? And then you find another man excelling. And then you find another man. He's just good at cleaning up mess. He's a, prop, he's a crisis manager. He's <laughs> gifted in that area. Why? One of the winds, either of the four winds, is dominating his life. Because he's a product of the wind. So in you that is sitting is the north wind. Inside of you is the south wind. Inside of you is the east wind. And inside of you is the west wind. It depends on which one you permit to dominate your spirit. And that is what you now finally become. So when you see a man who is a, who is a vandal, who is wicked, having an innate desire to do evil, it is because the east wind in him has taken hold of his spirit.
Is it not amazing? Even a murderer like Paul could finally become an excellent fellow, mm. telling you that we should be ministers of grace. Mm. Why? One, once upon a time in his life, the history took hold of his spirit, and then, second a time in his life, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, right? Yeah. Right? The yeah, North Wind took residence. Wind. And then, of course, it was the North Wind and the West Wind cleaning up the mess and fixing his life. I mean, to the extent that this guy was such a companion to the Lord that the Lord would call him to heaven and say, Brother, let me tell you some things. Then you will go back to the earth. And Paul would say, Well, I mean, I just had a visit to the third heavens. And the Lord revealed things to me. And then the people will be asking, so what did he tell you? He said, yeah. He said I should not share with anybody. So why did you incite our um, curiosity then? And he died with the revelations. Mm. And so when they hear people like us talk, and what we say does not sound conventional to them, they say, this guy is a spiritualist. Mm. Because what we are about to say now, you may also call us a spiritualist. Too. <laughs> we were listening to the four winds. The part four. <coughs> Sorry, the part. How many parts do we have on YouTube right now? We have part four, right? Part four. We're listening to the part four of the North Wind on our YouTube channel. And we were even amazed. I said, really? Mm -hmm. And interestingly, the people who made comments were the people that were blown away by the North Wind from our, from our fellowship. <laughs> the people who made comments. We were listening to them. Even on our YouTube, I say, ah, oh, once upon a time, this person used to be part of us. <laughs> Blown away by the wind of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you better hold tight, otherwise the wind, it will blow you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because where God is taking us to, brothers and sisters, where not the Spirit me. of the Lord, <laughs> Amen, we like that, say, not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> because where the Spirit of the Lord is taking us to, you know, eagles, they fly higher. And the more you fly higher, the more the current of the wind. Right. And if you cannot hold tight, if the jaws, if the clip of your jaws are not tight, to hold on to the feather of the wings of the Holy Ghost, it will blow you off. They haven't seen anything yet. I said our testimony shall paralyze them. Amen. 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 <laughs> Alright, today we want to talk about speaking to the wind. So now we know man is a product of the wind. We want to talk about speaking to the wind. Amen. Speaking to the air. That's the point. That's the lesson really. Speaking into the air speaking into the air and it is one area a lot of believers do not know sad to say ministers so they can't teach it and when the spirit of the lord began to show us these things along these lines we were amazed speaking into the air and we're going to read a scripture that you are familiar with but you never saw it that way is it not amazing a native doctor can chant, 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 chant. Who is he talking to? You don't see. But he's talking to the air. And what he says actually comes to pass. Isn't it not amazing? And then we begin to say, ah, this Arochuku native doctor is powerful. <laughs> Sorry for his message. <laughs> this brother is powerful. Is it not amazing? Let's use Nigeria, for example. We have over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, different languages, right? Over 250. Edo State alone has over 75 different... Every kilometer in Edo State is a, is a different language. Edo State is just peculiar. And so, Nigeria as a whole has over 250. And they said, uh, we were told recently that in Jos, just behind the mountain, they found a new tribe. They don't wear clothes at all. They speak a different language in Nigeria. <laughs> all right? They don't wear clothes at all. Far from the moral side of civilization. They don't wear clothes. I mean, they don't wear clothes. In fact, when they see you wear clothes, they are amazed. <laughs> Amen. In Nigeria. As educated as Nigeria is. Okay, but the point we we're trying to get across is that. Is it not amazing? That you go to a place like Bauchi, Biu in Bauchi, far north, you see a native doctor or a witch doctor making incantations, speaking into the air. You come to Gomojo in Nigeria, the same practice. You go to Akwaibon, the native doctor is speaking into the air. What is it about this air? It's not as if this native doctor in Bill knows the native doctor in Obomojo. 
It's not as if they hold a conference meeting to decide who are going to be speaking to the earth. Mm -mm. And now you even come to America here, or you even go to Ghana. The native doctor does exactly the same thing, speaking into the air. Then there must be something about speaking into this, into this air. Because the air is everywhere. And like we said, man is a product of the air. It's a product of the wind. So you begin to have an idea why these people like to speak into the air. Because man is a product of the wind. So, now, you come over to America, you meet a palm reader, making certain chance to the air. I've never patronized any, but maybe some of you have. But I want to believe it's the same thing. Because, you see, I've been a member of a fraternity before, and I know that, <laughs> forget, you see all these things they call lords, they have different names for it. They do the same thing. They only have different logos. Mm. They do the same thing with different logos. And one thing that is peculiar to every fraternity under heaven, every secret cult fraternity for in the kingdom of darkness. You know, Christianity is also a cult too. Mm -hmm. I hope you know that. Yeah. If you didn't know that, just know that Christianity is a cult. Yeah. The Bible says we are baptized into one spirit and you are made to drink into one spirit. Is that not an initiation? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But one thing that is peculiar to all of them is the triangle. Mm. Go and find out. The, whether the triangle is upside down, no. Diagonal, if there's any triangle that is diagonal. No. Or right side of, Sister Bola, you're even a teacher. Right side of, central up, down, whatever, is a triangle. Yes. They all have triangles. Uniformity. Uniformity. You know what that triangle means? Mm -hmm. If you see, triangle, right? Mm -hmm. Up. Hmm. Should we go into that? Yes. No, no, let's not go into that. But, but let's explain something. Oh, the triangle, right? Three corners, right? Say mystery. Say mystery. mystery. Want to reveal a mystery to you? The triangle, right? They stole it from the church. So, the triangle, one up called the summit, right? No, not Father. You think Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, don't fool yourself. You are, you are already deceiving yourself. <laughs> they have a triangle. Mm -hmm. The summit, right? Then you have the base. And two angles at the base. You know what that means? Let's tell you. The summit here is where Satan is. That's their God. Man is at one corner of the base. Man is at the other corner. This man here contacts this God here to destroy this one, this other man here. Mm. That's how they operate. Mm. The same thing too in the kingdom of God too. Because it's also a triangle relationship between us and the Lord. God is up. Two of us. Yeah. Man at the two corners. They are where? They are down. So man needs to contact God for God to do something to mm. bless this man. Right? Mm. But the problem with the church is that man is trying to contact man to do something to God. And man is trying to contact man for help. See, he's breaking the other. It's a triangle. <laughs> These people understand it and they apply that principle. You, you only know man to man. So you say, man, no man. Is that not how you say it? Man, no man. You say, it is who you know. Is it who you know? <laughs> Continue. <laughs> but the point we want to drive across. All right. I want to talk about speaking into the, the air. air. Speaking into the air. Speaking into the air. Say, say speaking into the air. Speaking, speaking into the air. air. Are you offended? No. no. If you are not offended, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking into the air. Speaking into the air. Say it. Say speaking into the air. Speaking, speaking into, into the, the, the air. air. You see, we said man is a product of the wind. And there's a reason why the spirit of the lord wants us to look at these lessons because you see everything that is done in the kingdom of darkness they actually stole from the church there is such a thing in the bible called speaking into the air the bible actually uses that same expression speaking into the air but many christians are ignorant of, about it like we said the scripture we are going to read now you are going to read it but it is something that you have read many times but you have glossed over it it didn't make much spiritual sense to you because you never saw it from where we want to show you from. So turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 
This is something. How many of you are drawing triangles on your... <laughs> hey, are you a Rosicrucian or a Freemason? <laughs> Amen. Later you go and say, Brother Elsie said, oh, this is Brother Elsie, oh. Then the person said, hey, 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 finally, finally, we have got him now. Can't you see Triangle? Mm. See Freemason Triangle. Ah, Brother Elsie is a member of this. <laughs> 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 First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How many of you are learning something? Yes. You are learning something, right? Yes. Don't go and look at that triangle and say, hey, let me look at this triangle very well. <laughs> Take your time. Don't say, brother, do not send you on there. Amen. 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 Don't worry, nothing will happen to you. Amen. 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 They are afraid of brother Elsie. They, they, they are afraid of brother Elsie. They fear brother Elsie. Amen. 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 My dad, in my 200 level in the university, my dad prayed one prayer for me. He said, Rosie, you are God's life wire. Is there anyone that tries to touch you for the wrong reason shall be electrocuted? Amen. I've never forgotten that prayer. And I said, Amen. Amen. I have never forgotten that prayer. And it's still working. It will never stop working. Amen. You know, you better be OC's friend. Don't be, OC, don't be OC's enemy. Otherwise, you'll be electrocuted. Some have been already. <laughs> Say not to me. Not to me. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14. Amen. And that's our prayer for you. Anyone who tries to touch you for the wrong reason shall be electrocuted. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say, I cannot be harmed. Say, I cannot, I cannot be harmed. I cannot be harmed. Amen. Never be afraid of anything, no. Never be afraid of anything. But respect people. Honor them. Give honor to whom it is due. But never be afraid of anyone. All right. No, 14. chapter 14. Chapter we, we've 14. not given any verse yet. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you there now? Yes. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 You don't want to stay up the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say that doesn't like noise. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan doesn't like noise. Oh. Shout hallelujah. 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 Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, pastors don't like noise. Pastor like, oh, you know. Not this one. <laughs> pastor don't like noise. Pastor Eddie is not a pastor. No. He's a prophet. Amen. Yeah, we only call him pastor. Pastors don't like noise, really. But prophets like noise. That's why when Elijah heard the thunder and the fire in that cave, he thought the Lord was there. Then the Bible says, but the Lord was not in the... Because he's used to noise. <laughs> tell you, if you come to our place, our neighbors, if you, if you tell them to tell you about Brother Azzi, they tell you, ah, Brother Azzi, always shouting. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen. All right, First Corinthians chapter fourteen. Let's start from verses eight, or let's go to verses seven. Are you there? Yes. Say amen. Amen. He said, "And even things without life, giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp?" He said, instruments give different sounds. Mm -hmm. Instruments, whether harp or pipe, they all give a distinct sound. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to know whether it is the drum set that is beating, or whether it is the sax, the phone, saxophone, right? Or whether it is the piano that is playing, or whether it, whether it is the flute or the guitar. Mm -hmm. Each one has its own word, distinct Sorry. sound. Yes. Follow this. There's a reason why the Holy Ghost, through Apostle Paul, is saying this. Look at verses 8. He said, for if the trof trumpet give an uncertain sound who shall prepare himself to the battle mm. yeah. you know the bigo is something they blow mm. for war he says and if that bigo is not blown right 
Everybody will say, Confusion. nothing is happening. Because they are familiar with a sound for war. There's a particular sound when there is a call to war. It is rarely blown. But everyone is familiar with that. In fact, when you are joining this, uh, the military, that's the first thing they will even teach you. To be familiar with the trumpet for, for war. Everybody, whether in your deepest sleep, you must be awake when you hear it. He said, but if it is not blown right, nobody will prepare himself for war. So if the enemy finally comes to attack, who would they blame? The person who blew the trumpet. He did not blow it right. And the, the, the army was held captive, was defeated, not because the army was a weak army, but simply because the guy in the watchtower did not blow it right. <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. They have the best arsenals. As good as the American arsenals are, if the alert is not given right, they can still be defeated. Now, it's amazing that he's using a military term for, to interpret spiritual operations. Mm. You see why even in the realm of the spirit, it is not meant for jokers. It's not something you handle with levity. You must have an understanding of what of the realm you are operating in. Many Christians are in the realm of the spirit, but they don't understand how serious that realm is. They are still saying, oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean it. Oh, sorry, for, forgive me, it was a slip of tongue. You are still saying slip of tongue. In the realm of the spirit, you say what you mean, and you mean everything that you say. The Bible says you cannot say one thing and say, oh, sorry, it was my mistake. The Bible says that, will, that is what will make God get angry with you. Because of the angels. Is there Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 6. He said, do not say something and say, oh, I, I meant the other way. He said, that is, that is what will make God get angry and even destroy the works of your hands. God himself will attack you. For saying one thing and meaning the other, to say, no, no, that's not what I meant. He said, that will even provoke God to be angry with you and destroy the works of your hands. So when we say, be careful what you say, so people don't understand. When they tell you to talk right, maybe some ministers have not been able to even explain it to you. So he said, if the trumpet is not blown right, the people will not prepare themselves for war. Now, what is he trying to get at? Look at verses 8. He says, so likewise. So he's comparing the blowing of the trumpet to prepare the army for war to something he's about to say now. He says, so likewise. <laughs> so likewise, ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the word, yeah. the air. Let, let's read from the original Greek what it says. The original Greek says, So also you, unless you utter by the tongue speech that is clear, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. So there is a possibility that a man can speak into the air. And what is spoken into the air is something that is not understood. He said, because anything that can be understood is not spoken into the air. But anything that we, that we speak that is not understood is actually spoken into what? The, the air. air. Now, the interpretation we've always had to that verse of scripture among the Christian ministers is that the person is saying nonsense. Hmm. Whereas the person is not saying nonsense, it is hmm. deliberate. So you can deliberately speak in a language that people do not understand. And so they may say you are speaking into the air. Indeed, you are speaking into the air, but you know who you are talking to. You see? That's why a native doctor can carry something and speak into the air. You might call it nonsense because it's, it sounds strange to you in the name of incantation, but he's speaking into the air. Now, was he stupid doing it? No. He's speaking to the air and he's doing it deliberately because there is something that he's activating. But here you are. You don't even know, it. That you, you don't even know that you can also do the same. So he says, any language you speak to someone that you can understand, you are not speaking into the air. He said, but if you speak a language that nobody understands, you are actually speaking into the air. Now you can actually see the uniformity of the principle governing native doctors. Which doctors? With incantations. 
Because they will always speak what you cannot understand. Brothers and sisters, if you ever meet a native doctor who, incant who incantates for you, and in the course of making incantations, you understand what he's saying, then you don't need him. You don't need him. Because if you can actually say what he's saying, then you don't need him. He knows you don't understand. And he say what he's saying because he knows you always need him. But where did they get this thing from? They stole it from this 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 9. They speak into the air. It's a principle. It is deliberate. Because somebody says, boy, he say nonsense. It does not make sense. Look at verses 10. Then let's find out whether that person who is speaking into the air is actually saying nonsense. Because many preachers have interpreted that verse of scripture to say the man is saying nonsense. Look at verses 10. Look at what Paul said in verses 10. The Holy Ghost through Apostle Paul. He said, there are, there are what? There are. All sorts of languages. He said, there are, it may be, so many kinds of what? Voices in the world. Sister Benedict, your version said languages. That's actually the correct one. And none of them is what? Is without signification. He said, none of them is without significance. The old King James says, none of them is without what? Signification. So how can you not say that the person who is speaking into the air is saying nonsense? When the same, the next verse is telling us that everything that is even being said, even the sound of a trumpet has a meaning. How much more somebody speaking into the air? You think it does not have a meaning? You see, that is the ignorance. That is the problem. Because we categorize somebody who speaks into the air as saying nonsense. We told you one time, we said when you see a madman talking, you think he's talking to nobody. He's actually talking to the angel that is taking care of him. Have you not noticed that a madman can go into the dustbin and eat from the dustbin, yet he's more healthy than you? Yes. Who eats spaghetti? Who is Italian? You are on your own diet. They tell you eat, uh, eat three slices of banana. Um, this. You pay an expert for it. Which diet do you put, put a madman? <laughs> Have you ever seen a madman walk to the doctor? Yeah? Have you ever seen a madman walk to the hospital to say, "Please, I'm sick. I have malaria." But he eats from the dustbin. What you will never dare to eat. Yet he's as healthy as you, more healthier than you. Now, and we tell people that is the spirit of the Lord taking care of this because God Himself knows that this man is helpless. Nobody will be able to attend to him. So God sends angels to take care of him because God made him for a purpose. He's not a waste. And if God can take care of a madman, how much more you? And then when you see the madman talking, you say he's talking to nobody. You are wrong. He says no language is without significance. He's talking to somebody. It is whether or not you know who he's talking to. So when you see somebody saying, bah, 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 don't fool yourself. He's saying something. He's talking to somebody. Because you have always thought that except by sister that Benedict face to face and talk to her, or I'm talking to somebody on the phone with a Bluetooth, you know, Bluetooth, you can put Bluetooth here, and because the person is on this side, maybe you can have a Bluetooth on your left ear, right, left ear, left ear, and somebody's on your right, and the person does not know that there's a Bluetooth and hears you talking, you may say, this one is mad though, yeah. only for you to now say, okay, you go, I'm coming, and by the time you talk, you now say, oh, he was talking to somebody. You know, we have always assumed that certain people are mad too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the point is trying to let us know. He said, no language is without significance. And that when you speak a language that nobody understands, you're actually what? Speaking into what? The air. Yeah. But now, he's bringing it into, he's addressing believers here. So he's telling us that believers can speak into the air. Now, if that is true, and we know that is it, and we know it is really, then who is in the air that we speak to? Because we know the native doctor speaks into the air and we, are, we know who he's talking to. So who can a believer be talking to that is in the air? Because we seem to say that he's saying nonsense. He's not saying nonsense. And just because you don't understand him does not mean he's saying nonsense. But he's actually speaking into the air. And he's constructing things in his life. But you don't know. Because if a native doctor can sit and cross his leg in his worn, dirty bedroom or one bushy place where you have mosquito bites everywhere, 
and sitting comfortably there, making chance to seize an entire region, or waste lives. Then, the question is, we say we are born again. We have eternal life. The life that Jesus had is what we have. We say we have the Holy Ghost. How come a native doctor is still terrorizing you? You attend every prayer line. You lead prayer even in your church. They know you as a prayer warrior. But somebody still twists your heritage. So you are like an instrument. You know volume. Volume. So a native doctor looks at you and says, this one has been making too much noise. Let me reduce her volume. Turns you from 100 to 0. Nobody hears your voice. Nobody even knows whether you have a ministry. Your pastor cannot remember the last time he called you to come and lead prayers. Because somebody turned down your volume. You get what we're saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist was where? In the wilderness. People were looking for him. You, they told you, come and start your... If you have your church in one train station, by the train station, in Newark, there are many people there. The crowd will call. It's not in the crowd. I've always wondered, if a little doctor can be in a bushy place and people are looking for him, it doesn't matter where the ministry is, they will look for you. Mm -hmm. After all, who brought you here? Was it Brother Ossie that told you to come? No. Mm -hmm. It is grace. The Bible says it is not by power, it is not by mind, it is about by my spirit. What you need is the voice. Amen. And then what you also need to understand is who you are talking to that is in the air. Because there is something in the air that you need to speak to. Because man is a product of the wind. Man is a product of the wind. If, the, if, we can, if, we can acknowledge, if we can acknowledge that man was made from the ground. So they say, to dust, to dust, the person returns. Right? Mm -hmm. Not brother housing now, but the person. They say, to dust, to dust, the person returns. They have much more. The person that was created. Mm -hmm. Satan is not even after the body that was made. Satan is after the spirit, which is the real person. Mm -hmm. And he knows that that person is a product of the wind. What did the Bible call Satan? In Ephesians chapter 2. He calls him what? The prince of the power of, what? of the air. There is something in the air. No wonder native doctors can speak into the air. Because they know their prince runs that region. Runs that element. Jesus said, you are in this world. But you are not even from here. He said, I am from above. You are from beneath. Now, we are also from above. Let's show you something. He says, so likewise, verse 8 again, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise, ye, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. So if you are speaking into the air, what is in the air that you need to speak to? Paul says, if you speak a language that people do not understand, you are speaking into the air. But Paul did not tell us what was in the air. Why? Because he already did. He had already told us about the air. What is in the air? He says, because if you speak a language that the people do not understand, you are doing what? You are speaking into the air. So what is in this air? What is in this air? Go to verses 2. Verse 2 of the same chapter. What did he say in verses 2? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto, unto men, but unto who? God. But unto who? God. Why? For no man understands him. You see that? For no man does what? Understands him. How be it? In what? In the spirit. He speaketh what? Mysteries. You see that? He said, but when you speak in an unknown tongue, that language that nobody understands, you are speaking to who? God. God. So where is God? In the air. So how can you say that the person is saying nonsense? So even when you see a madman on the street, how can you say he's talking to a nonsense? Mm. Or you are saying he's talking to nobody. We used to even sing rap poem. I know in, uh, Mr. Nobody, right? There was a poem we used to sing then in Nigeria, in our Queen's premiere. Even parapsychology. I recall I did psychology. 
not like you Americans. So maybe the British psychology we did is different from the American psychology because everything in America is different. But I know of a guy called Sigmund Freud, right? Is it the same Sigmund Freud? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so same thing. Okay, fine. So I did psychosis, I recall. I did parapsychology. And in, in, in parapsychology, we were taught that you are not the only person who lives in a house. That's what they taught us in parapsychology. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting to, mm -hmm. to us. In parapsychology, that, like this place now, right? Let's suppose this place. Parapsychology will tell you that the owners of this facility are not the true owners of this facility. Parapsychology says we that are here are an intrusion to the real owners of this place. That the moment we pack ourselves and leave now, the real owners come back again to continue their activities. That is why past psychology has proven it, that you can leave your pen here and go out and come back and see the pen move from here to this place. And you try to wonder why. Because past psychology tells you that you are not the only person living here. Now, if science can even be given that kind of postulation, how much more... Spiritual operation. You see, they are even trying to interpret spiritual operations with their scientific knowledge. How much more those of us for whom the eternal verities have been given to us, we are very ignorant of him. That's the problem in the church. So we celebrate a native doctor, a witch doctor with white chalk on his face. <laughs> who does express for Satan. But you that is wearing Jojo Armani jacket, standing on the pulpit to say, praise the Lord, collecting offering and tithe. You are ashamed of the Lord. Because there is no testimony. He said, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto who? Men. But unto who? God. He says, for no man understands him. How be it? In the spirit. The realm of the spirit. He speaks what? Mysteries. So now, let's speak in other tongues. Let's speak in other tongues. Malakra dele, vogos kase, brakas kiza, rakatia. Remoko so, brakas kala, pradilia, brakas kiza. Lita, brakas koso, kretike. Stop. 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 Now. Did you understand what you were saying? No. Who were you speaking to? God. How? He said, in the realm of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. You speak mysteries. But I saw you here, you were still sitting. So how did you get there? Because he said, in the spirit, he speaked what? Mysteries. How did you get into the spirit? Change language. How did you get into the spirit? Verses 14 will tell you. He says, verses 14 of that same book tells you. He said, for if I speak in an unknown tongue, my word, my spirit prayeth. You see that? My spirit prayed, but he says what? But my understanding is what? Unfruitful. So you can be in the realm of the spirit 24 hours of the day. It is whether or not you even know you are already there. See? So what is speaking into the air? Speaking in other tongues. Now when you read verses 18, you see where Paul says, I thank my God that I do what? That I speak in tongues more than you all. So people saw Paul as a crazy fellow because he was always speaking. They never saw who he was talking to. He said, but I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. So when they say, you, the only time you speak in tongues is when there's a prayer meeting. <laughs> or you're on prayer line. He said, but I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. The same Paul said he's thank you. He said he's thanking God. That he spoke in tongues more than every other believer in Corinth and all over. He said, I speak in tongues more than you. Even to this day, the voice of Paul is still shouting to the church today that he spoke in tongues more than even you that is sitting listening to Brother Elsie. Mm -hmm. He said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than... So Paul spoke in tongues than every believer on the face of the earth. That's why the Spirit of the Lord permitted it to be written in scriptures. Paul spoke in tongues more than you. The only time you speak in tongues is when you see Brother Elsie. Hey, Labakataya, just to greet Brother Elsie. That's you. <laughs> so it has become casual to you. You see the point? Yeah. Meanwhile, the native doctor is there. Speaking into the air. And he's fixing things, shifting things in the spirit against you, the believer. Bring. Brother Elsie picks the phone. Hello? Hi, Brother Elsie. I had one dream. <laughs> Hi! This dream that I had. Uh, I saw myself being put in the coffin. They put you in the coffin. <laughs> they have not put you in the coffin yet. They will soon need the coffin. You are still there. You are still there. <laughs> the guy is doing something. What did the Bible say? He said, Why men slept? Mm -hmm. Why men slept? The enemy came and did what? So tears. 
You are feeling sorry for Brother Elsie. Brother Elsie does not have time. Wake up early in the morning to pray. Do afternoon class, evening class, Nigerian class. You are feeling sorry. Brother Elsie is making adjustments. He's fixing things concerning his heritage. And for you too. You, you are not doing anything. You are saying you are feeling sorry. You are feeling sorry for Brother Elsie. Not you. Uh, <laughs> not you, now, but You are feeling sorry for Brother Elsie. You fix things too. Amen. 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 But, but you will you share your testimony with us now. They, they see you even in the place where you work as an unusual person. Yeah. Speaking into the air. <coughs> Speaking into the air. So everything you need, God has made available. The north wind is there. The cherubims are there in the north wind because you are the ark. The cherubims were watching the ark. True of us. True. True. And you have become the ark because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So the cherubims are watching over you. The wind is at, is at your disposal. Revelation chapter 7. Was it chapter 7? Uh, chapter 7, right? It speaks of the four angels that hold the four winds. And angels, in verses 13 of the book of Hebrews chapter 1, tells us that angels are servants, ministering spirits. And then... 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1, tells us, Though I speak with the tongues of all, men and the tongues of all, angels. These are the only two languages God recognizes. The tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And he says, no tongue is without significance. And just because you never understood what one person is saying, doesn't mean another person in the other world doesn't understand what is being said. It matters. It is whether or not you are conscious of who you are talking to. Yeah. So if Brother Elsie can be conscious of speaking to you now, you should be conscious of who you are speaking to when you are speaking in other tongues. So who do you talk to? Now you may say God. Does God really know that you are talking to him? Because it has to do with relationship too. Yeah. It has to do with relationship too. Yeah. When last did God see you in church? You see why some people, they have been begging God for a job. God cannot give them a job. God says, don't worry, I like the way you are. Stay here. Don't worry. Is it breakfast? I will give you. Lunch, I will give you. God knows if you should start a job, he will not see you again. God knows. God knows that. Ah, he will not see you again. You say, Pastor, I'll be sending my time. That's what you will be saying. God says, you know what? This one, no job. You, go, it's, you have the qualifications, but no job. Because God knows he will not see you again. God says, no, this one. Do you know, Paul, the Holy Ghost through Apostle Paul, talked about certain people, they need to be sick to die so that they can make it to heaven. Mm. It's a mystery that we have not really revealed in church. There are some people, they need to be sick to die and make it to heaven. Otherwise, they will go to hell if they heal them. Mm. Wow. The Bible talks about it. Paul said, he said, there are some. He said, just leave them. Then he said, let, let Satan do, do what? Destroy the body so that the Lord will be able to save their souls. So there are certain people, they, no matter how you pray for them, they can never be well. They just need to be, they just need to, if you make them well, look at Hezekiah. Hezekiah, they, they, oh God, what a waste. Hezekiah made up, a, he made a big mess in his life. As I the prophet came to tell him, put your hands in order, the Lord needs you today. In the courts in heaven. He started lamenting, oh God, only the living can praise you. This and that, this and that. God said, okay, Isaiah. Go and tell him that I've added 15 more years. Go and read the 15, the latter part of Hezekiah. The 15 more years that God gave him. He made a wreck. He made a wreck. And God knew. That was why God initially told him, come. But he made, he was saying, Lord God, I'm bringing my petition. Strong reason. So, at least he has heard it as, as I had the prophet preaching. Bring your strong reason. Let's read him together. So, he gave God his strong reasons. And God reasoned with him. But he made a wreck of his 15 years that God gave him. Go and read about him. He was a disaster. His 15 years was, oh God, it was a waste. He made a mess of himself. Speaking into the air. Now let's see how this, all, this, this whole exercise, this exercise of speaking into the air really began from. Let's see where it began from. Because you see, brothers and sisters, listen, 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 listen. We say the east wind. The east wind causes what? Causes calamities, right? Causes death, right? Causes infirmities, right? Causes banishment and punishment, right? How is it sent? How is the east wind sent? Through speaking. And what is being spoken to give instructions to the east wind? A language that you do not understand. So either in the kingdom of light, it is through a language, or in the kingdom of darkness, it is true a language, but it is all the same exercise. What is the exercise? Speaking into the air. So it is whether or not somebody is speaking into the air of your life to alter it. 
to corrupt the north wind of your life, or you are rather doing the one doing, you are the one rather doing the speaking. That's why I always tell people. We always tell people, don't let anybody give you the last word. Somebody say, I will deal with you. And the person wants to drop the phone. You say, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> ah. He said, please, I, I forgot to tell you something. Please, please, please. Then the person says, yes. Say what you want to say. You say, ah. The next time I will hear of you, I will come for your barrier. Give the person the last word. Don't, eh, in this life, people are vicious. People are mean. Is either you, Dr. Lukoya, DK Lukoya said, it is either you kill them or they will kill you. Was it not Paul? Was it not true Paul that Stephen died? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Answer now, was it yes. not true Paul that Stephen died? Yes. yes. Who fulfilled destiny more between both of them? Paul. 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 Did anybody keep Paul? No. Paul was the one who even decided to give himself. He said, now nah, I'm ready to die. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Stephen never fulfilled his purpose in life. Wow. He just began. And Paul, the apostle, terminated it before he became an apostle. But Paul, who terminated Stephen's destiny, fulfilled destiny. Is it not amazing? A little doctor who has destroyed many lives still turns out to be born again. And then God gives him a city chamber. You that was killed, you are in hell. Or even if you die and go to heaven, you are in the countryside. God does not even want to see your face. Like Lazarus, who was hiding in Abraham's bosom. Yeah. God never wanted to see his face. That guy was just a disgrace. That dogs were licking the wounds. Wounds from his body. Dogs. He was, he was, ka, ka. He was fighting. He was trying to ration, ration food with dogs. Dogs, they lick crumbs. He was trying to, he was starving dogs of their rights. <laughs> who did that to him that's the question who did that to him the east wind blew into his life and the rich guy was just there even though the last was went to heaven now he has seen bread at least a surplus of bread in heaven right yeah. but the question is this what do you read about Lazarus today mm, there is no testimony to his life if you open that book now, Luke chapter 16, you will read that he was hiding in Abraham's bosom. 50 years to come, the Bible still says he's hiding under Abraham's bosom. And in the city of heaven, in, in heaven, heaven is structured into three parts. You have the outer courts, just like the way Moses, the temple was structured. So you have the outer layers, where the topography is like the earth. That's the part that is called paradise. And that's the part that is Abraham's bosom. Mm. The countryside actually is actually Abraham's bosom. That's where Lazarus is to this day. Mm -hmm. He has not been able to enter the city. Mm -hmm. wow. God is rich. Yeah. There are places where beggars stay. The way you live your life here will determine where you will be classified in heaven. Mm -hmm. That's the point. The way you live your life here will determine where you will be classified in heaven. So who did it to you? The question is, is who killed you while you were on earth? When they wanted to kill Jesus, what happened to Jesus? He escaped. Because he knew it was not time. Yeah. <laughs> he escaped. Purpose must be fulfilled, though. He escaped. Yeah. Jesus also, he fled. <laughs> he escaped, though. Jesus also escaped. You, you are saying, I know who I am. God is with me. God. <laughs> Sit there. Sit there. <laughs> so, what's the brother say? Are you saying that if we, see, if we should see somebody now, Pointing a gun to us. Are you saying that we should just surrender? Yeah. The question is this. How did you get to the point where somebody was pointing a gun at you? Yeah. That means that you journey from life to hell. You were on the path of death. <laughs> because the Bible says there are many ways that seem it right to a man. But at the end, there are ways of destruction. Now, if you look at those who died, the martyrs you read of. You see, the story of the martyrs in the Bible is kind of deceptive. Because of the way it was interpreted in scripture. But Paul gives us clarity about the martyrs who died in scripture. They willingly submitted themselves to be killed. They couldn't kill them. They couldn't kill them. How can you explain somebody like John the Divine? They fried him in hot oil. And they could not, they said he was a witch. That was why they took him and abandoned him in the island of Patmos. Eternal life was flowing through his veins. The same eternal life you have. And you want to go to the same heaven that that same man of God is with the kind of life you are living. 
So you see cockroach, you say, hey, I can't kill cockroach. Cockroach. And you have eternal life in you. <laughs> you hear bar, you say, are we safe? Are we safe? <laughs> you have eternal life in you. Are we safe? <laughs> hey, you. Are we safe? <laughs> then you have some people, they say, my enemy is at it again. <laughs> <laughs> my enemy is... <laughs> they say, but what happened to you? Ah, the eye was painting the, the enemy. So why are you discussing it now? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to tell you that the eye was painting the enemy. <laughs> and the person's eye is swollen, no? <laughs> the person that is talking. Brother, what happened to your eye? Hey, it is my enemy. My enemy is sick. The eye is paining the enemy. Who is feeling the pain? <laughs> Who is feeling the pain? <laughs> Who is feeling the pain? The eye is paining the enemy. They were trying to... Ah! They tried to attack the enemy. Why are you discussing this? Are you the PRO for the enemy? Amen. Just say something happened to you. He say the eye is paining the enemy. The eye is paining the devil. <laughs> who told you? Who told you that? Say, say that was just last. Say, hi. See, you are trying to spiritualize your condition. Right. Trying to spiritualize your condition. Blind Bartimaeus did not try to spiritualize no, his condition. No. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Instead of you, me brothers, brother, he pray for me. I'm not. He said, it is the enemy that was. They tried to attack my enemy. <laughs> so why are you trying to console your enemy? You are feeling sorry for your enemy. You are discussing. Some of you, you know you have said those things many times. And brother said, I had this dream. I dreamed that my enemy was put in the coffin. So, praise God then. Amen. No, no, brother, you don't understand. I don't mean... <laughs> you were the one who called, though. You said you, you, you saw, you had a dream that your enemy was put in the coffin. Is that not something we should rejoice about? True of us. So we said, praise God. You say, no, brothers, you don't understand. Mm. What are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says they speak oh, in strange tongues. When you read the book of Nehemiah, we may not have the time. Let's see something in the book of Nehemiah. Are you offended? Okay, turn to the book of Nehemiah. Let's show you something about speaking into the air. Let's show you something about speaking language that people do not understand. Amen. Amen. Are you learning something? Say, I love Jesus. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know what to do now, right? You know where to put the devil now, right? You put him where he belongs, right? Amen, amen, amen. Say, thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 That sister, she wanted to ask a question. We'll take your question. Or you wanted to make a comment. Don't worry. You still say what you wanted to say, right? Okay. You would like to? Okay, fine. No Allah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking for my Nehemiah. Where is this brother? Uh, Amen. Amen. Ah, ah, you guys. After Chronicles. Ah, ah, you after, after who? Israel. Ezra. Ezra. After Ezra. Yes. I thought you said Israel. I was saying, where is Israel? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because you guys are not bishops, so. though. Who's still a. Zapola. <laughs> Zapola, thank you. You guys are bishops. Amen. Hey. You guys are pontiffs. Pontiffs. The pontificate in Rome. Pontiffs. Santos, Santos, Santos. There is a particular account we would like to read to you guys. From 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 the book of Nehemiah. It is a scripture we've not read in a while, but I, I know we... Oh, sorry. My, um, my mistake. Ezra, 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 please. Ezra. Because you know, Ezra and Nehemiah, they seem to share the same 
Yeah. Account. You got it right? Mm. You got it initially, right? Ezra, 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 Ezra. Go to Ezra. Ezra chapter 4. This was when some group of governors sent a letter to King Atzaziz. King Atzaziz. Say it, King Atzaziz. King Atzaziz. Now, this king was the king of Babylon. And he favored the children of Israel to go back to Jerusalem to go and build the temple. And, as, and, and certain people were sent ahead to go and start building the temple before Ezra himself joined it. And Ezra was not a prophet. Ezra was a, he was a teacher. He was a teacher. He stood in the office of a teacher. All right? But Ezra was not a prophet. Even though people categorize Ezra as a prophet, sometimes they even put him as a minor prophet. You see, those people who do those things, major prophet and minor prophet, he rubbish. If only they know how the Spirit of the Lord looks at them. You are categorizing, categorizing the anointing. The anointing. It's like saying that Elisha, they even categorize Elisha and Elijah as major prophets. And if they, are, if, they, if they say that there is such a thing called major prophet and minor prophet, then they are wrong in categorizing Elisha and Elijah as major prophets. After all, Elisha did more miracles than Elijah. So how come they, are not, they, they cannot categorize Elijah as a minor prophet? They know, they know the anointing of Elijah. Even though Elijah has gone to heaven, they know what Elijah will do to them. <laughs> Rubbish. There's no such thing as minor or major prophet. Prophets are prophets. There are ranks in the anointing, yes. But that, that doesn't make you a major prophet. It's like Jesus trying to compare his anointing with John the Baptist. Everyone came for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Fulfill that purpose. And that purpose is major before God. So what do you mean by a major and minor prophet? Again, they use those doctrines to clip God's people from rising. So one person comes, because he's a general overseer over many churches, he calls himself a major prophet. But once on the school brother who says, the Spirit of the Lord said this thing, this, they ignore that person. Mm -hmm. The Bible says when Jesus came, there was nothing to be desired in him. How come they never called him a minor prophet? Even Jesus said of John the Baptist, he said John the Baptist was more, even though John the Baptist criticized Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus celebrated him more. In Ezra chapter 4, are you there? Yes. Look at verse 7. The Bible says, And in the days of Atzaziz wrote Bishlam, Mitredat, Taber, and the rest of their companions unto Atzaziz, king of Pasha. And the writing of the letter was written in what? In the Syrian tongue. And interpreted what? In the Syrian tongue. Rehum, the chancellor, and Shimsha, the scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Azaziz, the king, in this sort. Did you see that? So it was deliberately written. You see that? It was written in the Syrian tongue because the children of Israel who came to rebuild the temple never understood the Syrian language. Conspiracy. You see that? Strange tongues which these people could not understand. And the scribes did it that way. And guess what? When you read, when you read, the person who even took the letter to the king was probably even a Jew. But he never understood the language. Mm. Strange tongue. Mm. Strange tongue. So as it were, somebody comes and says, come and follow me to go and see my friend. So you follow the person. But the person you went to see was even a spiritualist, but you didn't know. I know you never knew the transaction between that man and the person who invited you. And that was how they sold you in the spirit. You became a product. You became a, a sheep that was sold. When you read Nehemiah, um, Nahum chapter 3, from verses 1 to 4. Verses 4 actually speaks of the mistress of witchcraft. The great harlot. The mistress of witchcraft. The mistress of witchcrafts. Gives plural to it. Witchcrafts that traded the nation. With her 
with our witchcrafts that traded nations and families. So if it is a trade, it means that there is a market. And in the market, there is a language for business. There's a business language, true or false? True. It is whether or not you understand what is being said. You see, many Christians have been sold that way by speaking into the air. Somebody spoke to somebody in the air and the person understood the interpretation and you were sold because you were ignorant. You probably were the one who even carried the letter. And because the Spirit of the Lord has seen these things happening in the lives of God's people. Go to Acts chapter 2 now. Because, you see, we always think that the one who speaks into the air is crazy. We are not. Paul says, I thank my God I speak in other tongues more than you all. People should see you as a weird person. Weird in the sense that they should be fond of you speaking. They say this one is always talking. Because a, a Christian who does not talk cannot make advancement. You must be a talking Christian. What we mean by talking Christian is one who speaks in other tongues more. Even when you are cooking, you are cooking, cutting tomatoes. Libro, dozi, kraka, skala, kraka. Because you don't know where the arrows are flying from. When you read Psalm 91, he said, no arrow that fly by, by day, no by, no best. No, he didn't say, the arrow does not fly by night. He said, the arrows fly by day. Then he said, it is the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Then the destruction that wasted at noon day. Destruction. So these are three forces. So, morning, noon, and night. Consistent attack on you, and you are here lying on the bed. Oh, I'm tired, you know. I did two, two to three, <laughs> did three jobs. You are doing, you, then you turn, you, you adjust your pillow. <laughs> you are doing that one. The arrows are fight, hitting you. You are turning, you are adjusting for the arrows to enter the more. Then before long, they say stroke. One side, paralyzed. Then before long, you become vegetable. Vegetable. You are born again. Only for you to die and get to the gates of heaven and they ask you, what kid you on it? You cannot explain. He said it is stroke. Doctor said I have stroke. Doctor. <laughs> stroke. Kid you. Or you say cancer. <laughs> what kid you on it? Didn't you see? The angels were asking Jesus. When he rose from the dead, when he got to the gates of heaven, they said, who is... Jesus said, lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall That's come. Amazing. What did they ask him? They said, who is the king of glory? Because they never knew who he was. Because the Jesus that died was not the same person that rose from the dead. They said, who is the king of glory? They, they challenged him, oh Jesus, who made the angels. They challenged him. They said, who is the king of glory? Jesus. And then you think that you will just die ceremonially on the hospital bed. And you expect to get to heaven. <laughs> and then they will say, welcome that good and faithful server. <laughs> you will face serious questioning. <laughs> you better not die now, even if you are planning to die. We will not come for your bed. Don't die now. <laughs> <laughs> say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy we are telling you what to expect. They will, question, they will interrogate you. They did it for Jesus. And the Bible says, for as Jesus is, so are we in this world. So you can be sure they will question you. They say, who is the king of glory? Jesus said, the Lord is the king of glory. They refused to open the gate. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall call you. Who is the king? They asked him again, who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle, because they knew what happened between Jesus and Satan in hell, because Jesus went to hell. That's how they opened the gates. If they can do that to Jesus, the maker of the heavens and the earth, and everything that in them is. Then you come. You have died. So they come to do that. We know she was born again. Or he was born again. Thank God he was born again. He has made it to heaven. Who told you? <laughs> he died 10 years ago. He's probably at the gate. He's still being inter interrogated. He may be enjoying the breeze from the gate. You know the gate does not... There are, there, there are loopholes where the heavenly breeze can blow you and touch you. <laughs> Or oh, finally, finally, it's amazing. Maybe it is even when you now pass, you, mm -hmm. after 20 years or after 100 years, it is now when you pass that you now saw the person by the tree of life plucking the fruit, which is actually at the beginning. So you begin to wonder, ah, brother, you, be, you passed a long time ago, 70 years ago, how come you are still at this stage? And here you are, you are wearing the robe of praise, going into the city. He is still there, still eating the fruit of life. 
I said, brother, but you were born again. He said, well, if I tell you, I'm happy anyway. I'm happy. Oh. I'm glad I made it. <laughs> of, course, <we> are, <laughs> of course, you are happy that you made it. <laughs> so, some of you will be angry today. Ah, I shouldn't have come for this class today. Ah, I will never come. What Brother Ozzy told me today, he was just insulting me. At least that, some people have said Brother Ozzy insults them. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I said, me insult you. I said, I said, me insult you? How? Even the Holy Ghost will not even permit me to do so. You say I insult you. Somebody said I insulted you. I said, me insult you. You? How? When? Okay, tell me, how did I insult you? <laughs> Maybe I did. Please forgive me. Alright? <laughs> Okay, speaking into the air. Now let's let's bring something back home now. Speaking into the air. Because the needy doctor speaks into the air. So we should be able to do the same thing because we said everything they do in the kingdom of darkness, they stole from where? The church, right? They stole it from the church. So let's see. What gives us this confidence to speak into the air? Because we saw it in First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2, mm. that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God, yeah. for no man understands him, how be it in the realm of the spirit, he speaketh what? Me. Mysteries. Yes, so let's be sure, really, whether that is really so. Is that fine? Yes. So that you can have confidence when next you are speaking into the air. So that even if they say you are crazy, it doesn't matter. Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. At least, even if a fellow madman sees you and says, hey, hello, sister in Christ. You know? Because the madman too has noticed that you're always talking too. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Sure, sure. A madman. <laughs> Imagine a madman walking up to you to say, Pastor Eddie, don't think, say, hello, sir. I don't think that you are, I always watch you too. You're always speaking into the air. I don't think I'm the only person that is crazy too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So let's, let's find out whether, at least that will give you confidence, right? Mm. So go to Acts chapter 2 now. Are you learning something? Yes. Or are you offended? No. If you are learning something, say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hope you don't have any regrets for coming. No. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, right? Look at verses 1. What did he say? <coughs> are we all there? Or if you are not there, say wait for me. Wait for me. I, I, I owe you. It is people like you that, who, that, that, that needs an iPad then. And people like, for those of you, when you have an iPad, you are the one saying you are waiting for others. Yes, yeah, so. But remember, you used to go to table of content. Now you just press button. <laughs> click, click, right? Dear God. Like, Daddy Kennedy again narrated the story of certain ministers who were telling people to send their prayer requests that they are going to take a flight to the heavenlies and pray wow. to the Lord for God to hear them. Daddy Kennedy again said, my goodness, I wonder how Jesus made it in his days, because in his days there were no airplanes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> People have brought doctrines. And we, we, you watch them on TV. You watch them on TV. It's amazing. Is it not amazing? We were watching a, um, a program on TV last evening, after everything, before we went to bed. An array of renowned ministers, we will not mention their names, were talking on end time prophecies and they were still disagreeing. Reading from the same Bible, but disagreeing. One said, No, you are, I disagree with what you said with due respect. And this one said, This is the interpretation of this. This one said, mm -mm, This is what it means. Array of ministers, they have congregation, they have members, they say they have the same Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. yet they are disagreeing. Mm -hmm. They say they have the same Holy Ghost. Yet they are disagreeing. Yet the Bible says we should be of one spirit, of one mind, of one accord. They are disagreeing over Israel. The end time prophecy. Meanwhile, when this thing is going to happen, you will not even be here. They are arguing. They are arguing. And they have last congregation. This one will say his own. Funny enough, the people on TV, those, is it the clapping audience they call them? Do they pay them? This one will talk, they will clap. This one will talk, they will clap. This one will disagree and say his own, they will clap. This one, everything just programmed. Oh, makes sense just like in Acts chapter 6, the Bible says the saying of the apostles pleased all the multitude. 
the peak of hypocrisy. He said, he pleased all of them. Yeah, they, they were initially murmuring. Mm -hmm. Then they said, the saying of the apostles, when the apostles said, we will give ourselves to the word and prayer, find seven men among you, full of the Holy Ghost, full of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, <coughs> all right, that we may appoint over this business. The Bible says, the saying pleased all of them. But guess what? When they appointed the seven, six were Jews, only one was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And then you say the saying pleased everybody. Hypocrisy. Acts chapter 2. So that we can have confidence when we speak into the air. How many of you would like to, you want to speak into the air now, right? Yeah. Incidentally, you've been doing it, but you didn't even know. Yeah. See, the consciousness is what makes the difference. Yeah. What did he say? Verses 1. Let's when go. One, two, go. And when, and when, the, and when day the day of Pentecost, Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. place. Like, we are, like we are here right now, right? I, how many of you are in accord with us? Amen. 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 All right, now let's read. Look at verse 2. Let's go. Two, and, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Pause. Pause. As of a rushing what? Mighty wind. Sound from heaven as of a rushing. He says, Mighty and what? Wind. It's a wind. He said, but it is rushing and what? Mighty. What did that wind do? He says, and it filled all the house where they were what? Sitting. We are sitting right now. You see, we are fulfilling the requirements. So something must happen now. Amen. 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 Where they were sitting. And then what now happened? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. This is fire congress very yes. Amen. And the Bible says he has he made his sp angels spirits, right? His ministers a flaming fire. Each one of us is a flaming fire. Yes. You minister Amen. in different areas. Amen. Amen. Now look at what it says. And cloven tongues like as of fire sat upon each of them, each one of you. Look at verses four. And they what? And they were filled with what? With the Shekinah. The, they were filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. The paraclete. And began to do what? To speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. So, they were speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. Is that so? Look at the next verse. It was the Holy Ghost who gave them what? The utterance. And they began to do what? Speak in other tongues. Let's see how other people saw them. Verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this, no when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his word, in his own language. Now, if that can amaze those who did not receive the Holy Ghost at that time, because they later received that same day, a few hours after. If that was their experience, then why is it not our experience today? Why do you laugh at somebody who speaks in tongues and say, look at what, look at what he's saying? He's making progress by bulldozing mm -hmm. the highways, the spiritual highways, to make progress. You, there is so much, there's so many details and roadblocks. You are not speaking. You are laughing at somebody who is speaking. Because you do not understand. Say, I don't know what I'm saying now. Who told you you were supposed to understand? Mm -hmm. Is that not even where the power is? Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. You are not supposed to even understand. Someone said, but Paul said we should desire prophecy. And we should speak in order, we should desire to, to speak in other tongues and interpret. That's the gift there. But look at the same Paul who said you should desire prophecy. He said he thanked his God that he spoke in tongues more than you all. Who do you think, what, what options do you think you should go for? No, Paul said both. But which option should you go for? The one he chose. How often did Paul even prophesy? How often mm. did he prophesy? But he was a man full of power. The Bible says handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, or aprons were taken from his body. The Bible actually said he, God wrought special miracles. Yeah. Miracles that Jesus himself never did. No apostle under heaven ever walked the miracles mm. Paul did. The Bible calls it special miracles. Acts 19 verses 11. And God, it says, and God wrought, demonstrated special miracles by the hands of Paul. And Paul Never saw Jesus in his lifetime. Mm. Mm. Amen. So if it happened for Paul, you are not even a murderer yet. 
Even though you do back to sender, mm. even though you do back to sender, <laughs> you have not. Re- <laughs> so, <laughs> so it should it should work in your life. Do you, do you get the idea here now? Yeah. Mm. So how many of you are ready to speak in, into the air? Amen. So that by next week Wednesday when we meet here, there will be outstanding testimonies. Yeah. Yeah. Is that fine? Amen. Is that fine? Yes. Are you ready now? Amen. What is that thing that you want to change? You don't care right now, even if people say you are a mad person, right? No. Yes. So even when you are going to to your, to your office, Moloko too, Moloko don't be don't be too crazy about it, you know. When you are in the midst of a crowd, you can see it under your voice, you know, my secret. I mean, Pastor Lady, your daughter shared a testimony, right? We even have cake for them. She shared a testimony over how. Uh, her grace, right? Yeah. And she said, right? are you, you are the one now, right? Uh, what did you say you did again? You said you went, you said, thank you, Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Say it now, is that not what you said? Yes. You said, thank you, Holy Spirit, right? And they were asking you, what did you say? See, it was strange to them, but that was, that was what worked to the miracle. She had the highest grade, right? Yes. She and one other person. Right. They both had the highest grade, right? But she said, thank you, Holy Spirit. And they, even as thank you, Holy Spirit, which is simple to be understood, these people were dull of hearing to understand it. Yes. Can you imagine? Not familiar. See what Satan has done to them. Blinded them and made them deaf. Yes. They don't know what thank you, Holy Spirit means. You see, to them, it was the Syrian tongue that we saw in the book of Ezra. But it works. That's where the power is. Brothers and sisters, if you must excel in this life that we live, with all the activities in the world, and the heavy momentum in the realm of the spirit. You must be very, very unusual and abnormal. Yeah. You must be a man or a woman that is not understood. And your language must not be a language that everybody understands, apart from when you are sharing the word, which is unto edification. So are you ready to speak now? Yeah. All right, so if you still love God, stand to your feet, let's speak. So you know, when you, ask, when you want to speak into the air, who are you speaking to now? To God. God. Go, to God, right? Yes. And who is the wind? The Holy Ghost himself. Yes. The Holy Ghost himself came as what? As the wind. Wind. Now notice, he didn't say, in Acts, in Acts chapter 2 that we just read, he says, there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. But he never told us it was the sound of the north wind. Neither it was the sound of the south wind. Or whether it was the sound of the east wind or west wind. He just said rushing mighty wind. So which means that both the north, the south, the east, and the west of the Holy Ghost came together in that room. No wonder Ananias and Sephira died before Peter. Because it was the east wind from the spirit of Peter, the Holy Ghost, that killed them. See? Destroyed them. Because they lied before the man of God. They were too familiar. But the same Holy Ghost... The wind of the Holy Ghost lifted that guy at the gate called Beautiful up and gave strength to his feeble ankles. So inside, the, inside of you, now, yeah. is the north wind, the east wind, the west wind, and the what? The south wind. It depends on which side you want to see. You see, gold, frankincense, and mare were brought to the baby Jesus. True of us. True. Right? Gold speaks of what? Royalty. 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 Frankincense speaks of what? No. Frankincense speaks of what? Grace. Authority. Kingship, right? Frankincense. The mare speaks of the anointing. And the mare is a seed. Is a seed. It's so small that it... it <laughs> the mare is a seed. And it, it's such that if you... It's amazing they brought mare as a gift to the baby. They called them wise men, but they were bringing mare. Isn't that amazing? And this mare that they brought to the baby Jesus, the mare is such that if you rub it a little, this whole place will be full of fragrance. But you see that finger that you use in rubbing that mare, if you bring it to your tongue, it's a very bitter taste. It has a terrible bitter taste. It will stay on your tongue for days, just by the tip of your tongue touching that finger that you use in rubbing that mare. What does that tell you? If you rub, and what did Sam, Simeon say about the baby Jesus when he was being dedicated? He said, "In this was this child born for the falling and the rising of men. The mere anointing was at work in his life. What did Jesus say in, in Luke chapter nineteen, verses twenty-seven? He said, "All my enemies have said I should not rule over them. Bring them and slaughter them before me." The mere anointing was at work. The east wind from him was at work. So if you if you are nice to Jesus, you will have the best of Jesus. You will enjoy the fragrance." 
But if you try to attack Jesus, you will have a bitter experience. Is that not what happened to Paul? Yeah. When Jesus said, so, so, why persecuted thou me? He said, for it is hard to do what? To kick against the pricks. So nobody should come in contact with you and not have a divine encounter. Amen. 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 How, how can somebody give you a handshake and still go back the same way the person came? That is a mistake. That is a miscarriage. It is, a, it is an, an anomaly. So when you say good money to someone, that money must be good because you yes. said so. Yes. So if they tell you what is good Amen. about the money, you say it is good because I said yes. so. Amen. Speak now, let's speak into the air. Makra to focus to break it. Make a second. Makra to get a focus to suck. Lord, let there be a testimony. Maka sacra to focus. Lord, we have declared your counsel. Counsel. We have declared your counsel. Thank you. Lebro so maka sacra to focus to suck. Rabaka secret to focus to suck. Eh, Casa maka secret to focus to suck. Baga sacra to love for God's kiss. Maka secret of Bogos Kisaka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, there are some of you who don't speak in other tongues, right? Yes. How many of you don't speak in other tongues? Now, remember, it is when you speak in a language that you, you, you do not understand that you'll be speaking mysteries to the Lord, right? Yes. Now, as we speak now, as we speak in other tongues now, we're going to speak in other tongues. Again, as we speak now, the utterance is available because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Except you, you hold yourself. Except you hold yourself. Say it. It doesn't matter how it sounds. It was not supposed to sound sweet in your mouth. It is not. It is not rhyme. It is not rhyming scheme. Abidia. It is not Abidia. Amen. It is not for white sounds. Amen. Are you ready? Don't bring deep tongue or white sounds here. It's not for white sounds, oh. It is the tongues of angels. Angels do not understand vowels, so they understand every language. Amen. Amen. So it is not abidia. <laughs> you know what we mean by abidia? A A E O O. Abi. They say five vowel sounds. A A E O O. That's what we mean by abidia. <laughs> That's the pigeon. That's the pigeon interpretation of A A E O O. You know. A E I O. A E I O. I uh, okay, fine. That's even tongues right now, right? Is that do you understand what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's speak in other tongues now. Malaka Ma secret of Boscusa. Malaka Sakra Bakas Ku secret. Neka secret excusa katia. Rata Kabakas is a katela. Marko so prokoskusa. Rata Kabakas kiza. Mega secret of Boscusa katia. Lata Kabakas kiza katia. Mega secret of Boscusa prakaskisa. Baga saka. Rama Kaskusa Prakaskisa, Rato Vokos Kose, Mega Secretary, Rakaskila Katana, Rama Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Bele keteke vogos kusa bragas kisa. Baga sakra teke vogos kisa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Maga sakra toko vogos kusa bragas. Riba kaskala baga rugo toko. Reba kaskala bragas kisa katia. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Maga secret of Bogos. Magis of Bogos secretary. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Maga sacratele gives. Amen. Amen. How many of you received it? You spoke in other tongues. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. Let's begin one more time. Maladies. 
Yes, 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 yes. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. 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 Amen. Now, for those who spoke in order to us, congratulations. Amen. 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 Let's start for this. Amen. And what we are going to do is to speak it often. Speak it often. Paul said, I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than you all. Even when you are, when you wake up from the bed, bolo go secret take us, leave brothers carry. Even if you are carrying your toy to go and to the bathroom to brush your teeth, malakava secret go You stand up, you want to go and cut, prepare breakfast for your children. Molo go say, see you are releasing even the power into the food, so your children cannot have a DD. They cannot that they ate your food. Bolo go secret take us. Ah. God punish the devil. Makatala Bragaski Zegate. Play go so Bragaski. He has been. Makatala Bragaski. Makataya Kas. Hallelujah. Say this. Say, I will never be defeated in my life. I will never be defeated in my life. Say, no divination. No divination. No enchantment. No enchantment. No spiritual wickedness. No spiritual wickedness. No satanic manipulation. No satanic manipulation. Shall ever. Shall ever. Twist my heritage. Twist my heritage. Never. 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 Say, I know what to do. I know what to do now. Do you know what to do now? What do you do? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let's give God a, a hand clap. God has been so good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They say, Mother, how is business? Instead of saying business, no. Ah, listen, you own a business. Mother, you even own a business. You open the job. You buy that casino. Customers are flooding. Yeah. You are calling them. The wind. You release the wind to go and blow customers. Yes. Brothers and sisters. Yeah. Do you know because of you, somebody can be transferred from Pennsylvania to New Jersey Ooh, yes. because of you to come and patronize your product? Yes. We received an email from Brother Peter. An email from Brother Peter. How did the email come? He sent us an email. His own brother in North Carolina sent money to Brother Ozzy. And from the email, he said it all. He said he felt led to, to do it. Yeah. The wind. wind. The wind. Because we needed cash. We need cash. Amen. Ah, you open your shop. Instead of you say, let me do this. You are dusting the chairs. You are dusting the chairs. Malakava, customers are coming. They are coming from the north, from the south. Spirit money is coming to me. Spirit money. Huh? Spirit money. It is called spirit money. Spirit money, spirit cash. If you don't, if you don't want to call it cash, call it spirit money. Spirit money has come to me today. Lay bro, go super gas, Is it not amazing? Is it not amazing? People who who patronize native doctors, even when they are open, they are opening their shop. The native doctor tells them, stand at this side of your shop before you open the shop. Say something. Me, 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 me. <laughs> they come to this side. Do take it, take it, take it, take it. Come here and do. This. They do it. They do it. And then you will come and just say. Praise God, hallelujah. You are doing praise God, hallelujah. <laughs> Instead of you to come out, somebody is doing mene, 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 take it, take it, take it. He, he, and both of you are selling the same product. He has more customers than you because with mene, mene, mene. You, you are coming to say, praise God, hallelujah. Is it praise God? The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Amen. And only the violent take it by force. You are doing. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Every you are doing every living so praise the Lord. Every living so. 
The moment you see your neighbor doing mene mene, you say, Bolo Kotolo Vakasa Tia Valega Dele Bro, Zoma Kasa. Even the mene mene will stop. <laughs> because the person will go and meet it. I say, Baba, Baba, that, that lady, she's, on, she's weird, oh. <laughs> Baba, do something, oh. Baba say, go worry, go and do mene mene. Then you see the person again, you say, Bolo Kotolo Vakasa Lega Deba, Rata Kavaka Skise, Robo Koskisa. They say, Mala, you are disturbing, oh. You say, did I come to your shop? I'm in my shop. No, control everything. Are you the one paying my rent? Malaga, listen. Oh, you don't understand this thing. You see, John the Baptist was called a madman. No wonder. When you study the character of John the Baptist, Jesus described John the Baptist as a burning and a shining light. He was in tune with the heavenlies. Every 24 hours of the day, he was in tune. He was connected. Jesus described him as a burning and a shining light. And Paul was advising Timothy, quench not the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. And Timothy was born again. John the Baptist was not. Yet Jesus described him as a burning and a shining light. You are coming to do, you are lying somewhere to do many, many, many for you. Even in your office. Before you, have you not heard, we have heard reports. Somebody walk into his office, sitting on his chair. The moment he sat, they say they fired one arrow. And he becomes paralyzed. Just because somebody wanted to take his position. I worked in a bank. I was in, I was in investment banking. I was a payment officer. I was supposed to be a vice president of First City Monument Bank. I was supposed to be a vice president. The interview I went for, I knew what my own boss did to me. She said she would never. She was begging me every day. Oh, she resigned. Please go. I cannot let you be my boss because she was my boss of, for a few years. She said I cannot let. She said, Hey, oh, see, you have all these qualifications. I said, But when I was telling you I was taking leave, what do you think I was doing? <laughs> She said, I used to think that you were just going on to go and relax. I said, Madam, look at you. She fought, why? The same OC was coordinating fellowship. We were gathering bankers to do fellowship. Brothers and sisters, we have come, we, are, we know where we are coming from. This work did not just start today. Amen. Your lines always do many, many for you. Many, many. <laughs> is it not amazing? Even the person who is doing many, many doesn't know what he's saying. Business is moving for him. You, uh, you have cross before, before the entire show. There's the cross of Jesus. You have palm, 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 dry palm fruit. <laughs> He's like, you go and hang it. You have one picture of one brother that is only one stick. The stick is covered like this. We sheep. Now you are calling that person Jesus. You don't know, you don't know who you are calling Jesus. Go and read the book of the Revelation. Then you know who Jesus is. That's an insult. To say Jesus is holding a stick with sheep. What is Jesus doing with sheep? He said the sil they have that frame in their house by their dining table. The silent guest in every house. They are calling Jesus a silent guest. The, did you hear that the Holy Ghost came as a rushing mighty wind? Was the ru my, rushing mighty wind, was it silent? No. And you are saying the silent guest in every house. Present at every meal. Go and throw those things away. They are full of unbelief. If you don't know what to break them, let's break them. Let's help you break them. If you don't, if you, you are just nice to some things. Silent guest. Then you carry, you say, I bought this rosary from Jerusalem when I went to Rome. Rome! Ah, brothers, you don't understand. The last rabbi in the days of Moses, he was the one who gave me this rosary. <laughs> so you hang it. You have become a native doctor. That's the shrine already. Then you say you have water. They build altar. There's nothing wrong in having an altar. You are the you are the temple. You are building altar. You put candle. You put light. You put all white. This thing. <laughs> Satan. Say, oh, if you know, and that is what Satan will encourage you to do. Don't worry. <laughs> the Bible says of Saint Martin's. Saint Martin's. Saint Martin. Say it. Say Saint Martin. Saint Martin's was the only person. He is the reason why, if you go to Ireland today, there is no snake. No snake in Ireland. No snake to this day. No snake. No snake. Snake. No snake in Ireland. Why? Why? Because St. Martins drove snakes out of Ireland. One man who died at the beginning stages of the Roman Catholic Church during the Dark Ages. Drove snakes out of Ireland to this very day. You will never see snake in Ireland. Even when the snake is coming towards the border of Ireland, he will retreat. No snake enters Ireland to this day because of one man. One man. 
Because of Mark chapter 16. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Right? He says, Snakes, scorpions, shall not harm you. This man changed snakes out of Ireland to this day. Go and read about him. To this very day as we speak, no snake can enter Ireland. No snake. One man drove snakes out. St. Martins. Most of you, you have brothers who bear Martins. They don't know where the name came from. They don't even know the meaning behind the name. They don't know the man who bear that name. One man drove snakes. You, you will see, you see cowboy, you see... Let's close though. We want to close though. Amen. Amen. Are you offended or you are glad? Amen. See, we're telling you these things because you see, God is going to do mighty things with your life. I tell you, like we've been saying, your testimony shall paralyze the adversary. Amen. You see. Amen. Except you don't believe it. I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. Amen. I receive it. Praise the Lord. Take your seats now. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. At least it's good to stand now. But also has been standing all through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell us, what got to you in this lesson? Powerful. Powerful. Amen. Powerful. What got, uh, what I really understand, uh, learned today, that the four winds lives in me. Amen. And I can choose any of the wind to operate. To operate with. To operate with. That's the soul power. Amen. And uh, you see, a lot of people, most of the people, they see your phone when you speak in tongues. Yes. You see, for the fact that, that you don't understand what you're saying, but you're speaking in the hair, and people think you're talking funny. Sometimes when I'm working, I'm, I speak under my breath, I'm speaking in tongues, and those Spanish guys, they say, what are you talking? The other guys say, are you speaking Spanish or what? Are you trying to speak Spanish? I say, I'm talking to my God. And now. Uh, so I even at my working place, the guy didn't like me. But what happened? Every day I go, I pray, I speak in tongues. They, they, it shifts them. Amen. All the ones that don't like me, they move them away from me. Amen. You know, it's it. So I see that there's a lot of changes. Amen. But when you speak in tongues, it's very powerful. Is it? Amen. You don't take uh, the word of God uh, speaking in tongues very lightly. So Amen. for the fact that I, the winds are in me. Uh, that's a uh, uh, mind blowing. That's good to know, right? That's good to know. So anything you want to produce, you can produce that's it from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you want a baby, you call for the baby. You yeah. release the wind to bring the child to you. Yeah, to you. My Lord. Yeah. Nobody can oppress you. Absolutely. Jesus said, Out of your innermost being shall flow what? Rivers. rivers. <laughs> and the rivers flow with what? With the wind, wind. blowing wind. it. See, you are made though. If you fail in life, it was because you wanted to. Oh my God. My Lord, tell us. It, it's almost what he said. Uh, the four winds are in me. Yes, sir. And those four winds, I can use anyone at any time, point in time. Yes, sir. It all depends on the one I want to release. You want to release. To bring abundance. The north wind brings abundance. The, the, the east wind uh, brings calamity. I can use the west wind to clean it to up. Clean it up. By speaking, into so, the by speaking into the air. So now you have so, received. So now you yes. are speaking more, right? Exactly. Marka, and again, so one important thing is when I'll be walking to my office now, I will say, Marka, last time. 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 From Nigeria, you from Kenya, or from Liberia, or from Sierra Leone, you bear David. Yet you are not a Jew. You bear Methuselah. You are not a Jew. You bear Goliath. Okay, that's a Philistine. You you bear who again? Peter. You are not a Jew. When is when is when is a Jewish man going to bear? Umetiti. <laughs> because of the exploits you did. You understand? When is somebody going to be a Chigose? 
Oh, no, they are going to be a bonus in very soon. You can be sure of that. Amen. At least, this is Dowsi already. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They are already bearing, they will start bearing Brother Dowsi. Yeah. At least people are bearing Obama. And it's not as if Obama did exploit. Sister, tell us, ma'am. What did you learn? We knew you came in a while ago. Bobby? Yes. I learned about the... Um you mean for the teaching? Yes, well, I mean, what got to you? Now you know what you can do, right? About so, the about the wing. Mm -hmm. And it won't be surprisingly, I came from another meeting. That's why we even came late. And we, you know, heard, I heard about the wing. And then to come here again and hear about the wing, but it was more explicit that. You know, the wing, yeah. four wings dwell inside me. Yeah. So I said, well, I'm going to really... Do something about it. Oh, yeah. Malakataya. <laughs> ah, this is not taking it lightly. Amen. 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 Yes. I said, I'm not going to... Malakataya. Amen. So, Rafael, tell us. You are the, let, let's hear you as the last speaker. The, uh, all the speakers so far, they captured everything I had wanted to say. But there is one thing that is very striking. To tell me. us, sir. He, he indicated that in the realm of spirit, that there is no such thing as a slip of tongue. Slip of tongue. What you said is what, what you, you mean. mean. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. very, yes. very... It's a principle. And we, we do a whole lot of that in our daily yes. activities. I was like, wow. Yes. That's why Jesus even said you will give an account of every wrong word, wow. vile word that you speak. Yes. Yes. He, said you, he didn't say you shall give an account of every word. He said you shall give an account of every vile word. Mm. And even when you say to somebody, somebody is stupid, it carries grievous consequences. The Bible says, whosoever collects his brother Raka shall not escape the judgment. Mm. The word Raka means stupid. stupid. It means fool. Mm. He said, when you use those terms, he said, you will never escape the judgment. Jesus said so. So let's be mindful of what we say. Amen. Amen. All right. Give our offerings. Can we stand to our feet, please? I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day. Wake up in the morning, lay my head on back to rest. I am blessed, my Jesus. I am blessed. 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 Every day, every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, lay my head on bed to rest. I am blessed, my Jesus. I am blessed. Say it again. Say, I am blessed, my Jesus. I am blessed. One more time. Say, I am blessed, my Jesus. I am blessed. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Say it. Say hallelujah to Jesus. Say it again. Hallelujah to Jesus. Jesus. Again, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. May you prosper and flourish like the cedars of Lebanon. May your heritage be protected in God. No man born of any woman, no demon after of her, no spirit shall twist your heritage from this day forward. The right wind of the Holy Ghost has taken dominance of yes. your spirit, Amen. and you will surely prevail. Amen. In every circumstance, you are victorious. Amen. You will never be defeated. Amen. God has made you a God in your world, Amen. and you shall rule over any Pharaoh in your world, Amen. perpetually, all the Amen. days of your life. Amen. The enemy will never prevail over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. no man shall be able to refuse the wisdom with which you will speak from this day forward. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are likable, you are favored. 
forward. Amen. And wherever you go from this day forward, you are offered Amen. seats. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is your lot and your heritage Amen. from this day forward. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now put your right hand on your chest. And say this words. Say, I was born. I was born to be, to be your dwelling place. Your dwelling place. Oh, God. oh God. Our home, our home. For, the glory for the glory of the Lord. Of the Lord. So, let my life so let my life now be, now be separated, separated unto you, unto you that, I that I may be. Now hit your chest. That I may be. That I may be. What I was born to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Put your two hands on your head. Say this. I have a good head. My head is blessed. My head is wearing my crown. Because angels are fighting for me. My head will never be used for any satanic manipulation. Now hit your head. Say you this beautiful head. Hit it again. Say you this beautiful head. You are leading me to God's divine destiny for my life. And I will fulfill my calling without reproach. Because all I require for life and success, victory and increase, wealth and favor, power and majesty, beauty and increase, God has given me to the glory of his name. And for his name's sake, I decree. And it is so forever and ever. Because it is so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For glory and grace. Now walk up to six people and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.